Well, thank you everybody for coming today. We have our own local North Reading AAA office going to do the presentation on, what do we call it? The real ID. The real ID. I know we have a thousand questions because I've been hearing a thousand questions from everyone else. So today we have Donna Serino and Kim McMinnis. McGinnis here, yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. McGinnis here today to help us uh, navigate uh, the new rules and regulations of this new law. So thank you for joining us today. And again, please, anyone with phones, please turn them down. And remember, we're being filmed. So thank you very much. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, we want to thank Mary and Sherry for inviting us um, because I know there has been a lot of um, questions about the real ID, and hopefully Kim and I can answer some of those questions today. I, we are not experts by any means, but we service our members, and we have a good insight as to what's required um, for what we need for the real ID, or a standard credential, because you don't have to get the real ID if you don't choose to. It's a federal ID. Um, it will come into effect October of 2020. Um, but it's not something that you have to have. If you have a passport, that's going to serve you just as well as the real ID. But um, people who don't have a passport or don't want to renew their passport, I would say the real ID would be something that you'd need. Uh, you will need it to board a domestic flight come October 2020, and you will need it to get into a federal building if you don't have a passport. But you do have until October 2020 to get it. So it's not something that you need immediately, but they started to roll it out because they figured it would take, you know, that long. Just like when Easy Pass came out, they gave us some time, but then last minute, everybody wanted an Easy Pass. So they felt that this was going to be the same deal, so they they wanted to roll it out a little bit sooner. Okay. Um, we did pass out this identification checklist. So this is what we are giving out to our members, um, and it gives you an overview of what you will need for different credentials, whether it be a standard credential, which is a regular license, or a real ID, which is your federal ID. Okay. Um, we'll start with that, and let me see what else I want to mention. The other handout that we gave you is just some information um, I did put Kim did put um, one of these document checklists in every one of those folders. So this one for us to go over today, but you to take it with you um, for when you, you feel that you want to get your uh, license renewed or you get your real ID. Okay? And I also included um, an application for your license to right. renew. So if you want to do the paper application, you can fill out there and if you're a AAA member, you can come on into North Reading. The paper application can be used anywhere you go, whether you go to AAA office or you go to the registered motor vehicles. You can also go on to the RMB website and pre-stage your application, which means you put in all your pertinent information that they're asking for, and what it does is it gives you a confirmation number. Even if you can't print it out, if you don't have a printer at home or there isn't a printer available to you, you can get a confirmation number. You can take that confirmation number to the registry of motor vehicles, and they can pull up your information. So it saves you a little bit of time. Um, if that's not something that you're, you're, you want to do, that paper application, you will need that. For every transaction, that paper application needs to be filled out in its entirety, front, back, answer all the questions, and it must be signed. Because that's the only way they can access your information is by having um, your signature. And when you go online, you've already acknowledged that they can view your uh, information, okay? So if you were interested in just getting a standard credential, and a standard credential is just renewing your license. You don't want a real ID, I just want to get a standard license, and I need to renew it. What you're going to need is one, that application always. Two, you will need to provide proof of lawful presence. And what that is, it's saying that you are a citizen, you belong here, um, you need to provide a passport or a birth certificate. You also need to provide proof of residency in Massachusetts. So that would mean you would have to provide 
a utility bill. You would have to provide a cell phone bill, an excise tax. Anything that proves that it went to your home and this is where you live. Um, that's the easiest form. Um, oh, thank you. That's the easiest credential to get. Um, when you want a real ID, there's a lot more that's involved. You have to not only provide proof of lawful presence and proof of residency, you also have to provide proof of social security. Um, if you do not have a social security card, some people don't, we can, in fact, did we bring those kids? Um, I don't think we did. I can send that to Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we put together um, a little form on how to get your social security card pretty quickly. Um, I'll send that to Sherry so she can leave it out for you. And a lot of people have it, it's laminated, cannot accept it. Cannot be laminated. Nothing, your birth certificate can't be laminated because everything has to be scanned. And the scanner does not read through the laminate. So if you do have that, you can keep that social security card for another time, but for this purpose, it cannot be laminated. So you may have to request one. So I will, I will send that off to you. And it's pretty easy. From what we hear, People, once they order it, they're having it within a week, 10 days. Um, so let's take a look at this checklist. So how we were talking about, sure. Can I just ask, what is the advantage of a real ID to get in federal buildings? Federal buildings and be able to board a domestic flight come October of 2020. So you almost necessarily need it to live. <laughs> yes and no. I mean, right. a lot of people do carry their passport around. Um, Ooh, too dangerous. A lot of people do. Um, and then they feel that they don't need the real ID. But that's what it's going to do for you. Okay. Um, able Thank to board you. a domestic flight or um, gain entry to a federal building. So you can't get in a federal building without a real ID? Come October 2020. Mm -hmm. Unless you have your passport. Can I just add one thing sure. to the standard? Um, so if you're just coming in for a standard license, as she said, you have to prove lawful presence. And the one uh, proof of residency, if you come in to renew your license and uh, it hasn't expired yet, we can actually take your license as that form. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes it easy. So if you just bring your birth certificate, a passport, and if you come in before your license is expired, we can take that as proof of residency. Right. Okay. So yeah, so keep that in mind too. And that's if you haven't moved. Right. Yeah. If you it have has to have your current address. Now you have a new address. Right. That license that hasn't expired has your old address. That won't work. Yeah. So you will have to provide something for your new residence. I think people have the most difficult time with that, with the proof of residence. Yeah. yeah. So what age, everybody that has a driver's license, mm -hmm. so kids that are off the of college that are traveling. Even at Mass ID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to renew a Mass ID, it's going to be the same situation. You're going to follow these same guidelines. Yes. Yes, would you please define what is meant by the term valid passport? That it hasn't expired. Mm -hmm. And the expiry is 15 years, not 10 years. Is that correct? 10 years. 10 years. Uh, the passport that I have, I could travel with it for 10 years, but it's still valid up until the 15th year. That's why I'm asking the question. No, no. You, have, you have up to 15 years to renew it, but it does okay. expire in 10 years. Yes. Thank yeah. you. So, so up to 15 yeah. years, so if it's expired and it's been 11 years, you can renew it. You wouldn't have to apply for a new one. Thank you. Yes. You mentioned that uh, regarding the Social Security, mm -hmm. getting your card. Yes. On the list that you're about to read from, I'm sure, it says something, if they can find it electronically, what does that mean? Find it electronically. It has to verify electronically, verify, but we yes. need to see it. We need oh, you to scan still need it. to yes. see it. We scan it, scan it, and then it has to verify electronically. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything goes through the scanner, and it's a communication between Homeland Security and uh, the Registry of Motor Vehicles, and then it comes back, and it's accepted, it's valid, and we can... And again, the passport would same thing. supersede the need for the Social Security? No, we need both for the Oh, you do need Social Security? Yes. We'll, go, we'll go over that when we go over the LID. Okay. Some people get that confused that they, they provided their social, they don't feel they need to provide their passport or vice versa. No, for the real ID, you need, you need all these different columns of, of uh, documents. How are they notifying everybody they need a real ID? They've, they've done um, a blitz of, you know, signage by the side of the road. They're mailing a lot of uh, people that are up for renewal a letter that's telling them 
um, that this is what's going to happen October 2020. You can choose to renew your license as a standard credential or you can choose for a real ID. Uh, so I, I think that they've really tried to get the word out um, that this is happening. But you should, if you're up for, for renewal, I believe you will receive a letter in the mail. Yes. But they did. They did. They did the radio. They. they I've seen TV, it on TV. They, TV. And like I said, the blitz on the on the highways. Yeah. So I think they're really trying to get the word out. Yes, sir. Yeah. For a standard ID. Yes. You need your passport. You can use that. Yes. No. Do you need to use your passport? No, you, if you have a valid driver's license. Birth certificate or passport. You, you would need one of those, yeah. What? You need a birth certificate? Birth certificate or a passport. passport. Right. Yeah, okay. not just That's a license. That's lawful presence. Yes. Now, it, it says in here that it, the passport, I mean, your, your birth certificate has to be, has a, a embossed seal. Mm -hmm. well, I was born in Alabama, and they didn't have, they, we didn't have a passport. I didn't have a uh, birth certificate, an embossed birth certificate. It was registered in the, in the court, state house. Okay. And when I got my passport, mm -hmm. That can't. I got a copy of that, but it does not have a raised does seal. Does it have a, a no. stamp? No. no. It has nothing? No. Not in Louisiana either. Really? Tell me that. Do you have passports? I have a passport. I have yes. no passport. You passport. I have a passport. Yeah. Do you have a passport? No, ma'am. No. So, you know what? That's a question I can ask for you. Because normally the ones that we're seeing either have a stamp, they have a compression stamp, a city or state stamp, um, and or a race seal. A race seal. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask that question for you. It might have a stamp. I don't remember that. Has, but it mine, a mine, doesn't have a, mine has no stamp. It just so has the signature of, uh, like the clerk. The, of the uh, clerk of register clerk. of uh, in the court. Okay. That's all it has. I'll see what I can find out for you and I can email you. Sure, is Absolutely. that okay? Yeah. Any other questions right now? Yeah, yes. I have one. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have an old birth certificate. God, that's just you're old. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crumpled and old, but it's the original birth certificate. Yeah, I think this, it's stamped with the seal, but okay. uh, I was wondering, should I get a new one or will that still well, be good? That's a good question. Some of them will come in and they're they torn and some of the pieces are missing. In that case, we would advise you to get a duplicate. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it, again, it has to go through the scanner. It has to read all the information that's on that birth certificate. And if we can't do that, then we can't proceed. Well, I, I made a copy of it. And I have a copy of the original. And you can't use a copy. But what I mean is that at least it copied it. So if you could scan it, you no, should, no, it has to, be, it has to be a certified copy from the city. I mean, it's the original birth certificate. But what I'm saying is, I copied that original. I still yeah. have the original we and the copy. That. We cannot use it. Okay, so I'd have to get an all. Okay. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Not to be smart. Okay. But many people in Louisiana, including my wife, mm -hmm. did not have a birth certificate because she was born in, in a house mm -hmm. in Bogalusa, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. We had to go to court and we didn't get a birth certificate. We got a, a court document. Can you accept that? I believe that we can. Because mm -hmm. that's what we, I, we that's what I we have seen that once. Already. I got a passport yes. with one of them. Passport, again, would be your... It yeah, would trump it. Yeah, we certainly would advise you. Yeah, well, she, she, she's dead, but she <laughs> got her passport mm -hmm. by using that document. Yeah. Okay, yes. I, we have used it for I that one that we have. So, it would, again, it's something that can be tried. I cannot promise you that they'll accept it, because ultimately they're the ones that make the determination. We just submit the documents, and then we get an okay. Do you get the approval that day? Oh, right away. Oh, okay. Right away. Did you have a question? Yes, yeah. you have a question. I wasn't born here. I was born in Italy. I do have a passport, but 55 years old. Okay. I don't have any passport or license. I mean, um, birth certificate. Okay. What do I need? Do you have a naturalization or what? Naturalization card or? I have it. Um, so citizenship paper with okay. that. Okay. Um, That's citizen. that. That works. All oh, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Does that have the original seal on it? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a document. Um, yes, so it should have, it should have that on there. We can't take photocopies of anything. Nothing. It has to be the original, original, original documents. Yeah. And no laminate, as I mentioned. Well, that's what I'm not going to ask another question, but you know, some people in Louisiana recorded the birth in the Bible. So what prompted all this? All these people here. 
Every state's been doing it. They've been ro they've been rolling it out. Um, we're probably, I think, I want to say, but we've been told we're probably like number seven or number eight that's rolling it out. But it, it will be it will be a standard across. Oh, so it's not a federal mandate. It's not a federal mandate. It is. I it believe is. it is a federal yes. mandate. Yes. Everybody will. Everyone will eventually, eventually mm -hmm. have to have yeah. to do it. And but again, you don't have to take it if you don't choose to. Yeah. Um, but you do have to have another form, which would be your passport. So let's get back to the standard credential. So again, you would need an application. You would need proof of lawful presence, which as we mentioned is your birth certificate or your passport, and one proof of residency. Um, if we go on to the real ID, what you're going to need is proof of Social Security, and there's a few things if you want to take a look at the, the form that we gave you on the identification document checklist, what documents do I need? It's down uh, probably towards the bottom. It says proof of Social Security number. So one would be your Social Security card, and as it says here, it cannot be laminated. Your W-2, if um, you do have one, and your Social Security has to be displayed in full. It cannot be the last four digits. It can, cannot be X'd out, so we have to see the full Social Security number. Um, then you have a 1099 that you can receive from Social Security if you're collecting Social Security. And on that form, they send it out to you every year. That does have your full social on there, so you can use that like a pink and white form. Then a non-1099, and a lot of people do get these. Um, it's not from Social Security. It can be a 1099 for interest. It can be a 1099 for uh, additional income. So we can use that. Again, it has to have the full social on it. People have brought it in, and the last four digits are the only things that are showing. You can't accept it. It is a non-1099 from Social Security. However, it does not have the full social, so we cannot use it. Uh, a pay stub. Um, some people's pay stub do have a full social and a lot do not. Um, so you're kind of limited on the, on the documents that you can provide for your social security number. Um, and also the last one is a denial notice from social security, for passport, for a visa, because that will have your full social security number on there. So those are your options. And the one thing I will say is um, we cannot accept a Medicare card, even though it has your full social on there. A lot of people think they can do that, and we unfortunately cannot accept that. Because that yeah. does, until they're going to change that eventually, but they haven't done that yet. So your social is on there, but it is not so we can't can accept, accept that for this purpose. Yeah. No. Any questions? I was just wondering, like, if you just had your license renewed and then this went into effect. Right. You know, so now you have this new license, mm -hmm. but had you waited another month or so, right. you could get it with that. It now, if you decide to do it now, is you pay all over again? Or no, how, it how is an add-on. It is an add-on to your license. It will cost you $25 okay. to add the real ID. And again, you'll have to provide all that documentation yep. again um, to get that add-on. So, like, if you did it in February, now you want to go out there and do it tomorrow, right. you'd pay $25. It would be $25, and the expiration date is going to stay the stay same. same. And you another thing pay. I was thinking to myself, uh, like, uh, if you just brought your tax records with pretty much all your information in it, plus your birth certificate <laughs> and the other things, you'd have the information yeah. in there, wouldn't we you? We have to go by what's on this. Oh, page. I know. Yeah. But, I mean, you, I would have my tax records of my excise tax, sales tax, on the tax stuff. So, if, you, if, you, if you're going to use, for uh, proof of residency, your excise tax... It has to be like 2017. Exactly. Right. But that's yes. all in my records. That's why I say, okay. like, if I took you, that. You can bring that, but we're going to ask you to take that all the exactly. time and I, provide us. That's understandable. But at least I know they'd be in there and I, I'd have them. Right. Okay. Uh, for the, so for the next um, document that you need for a real ID would be lawful presence. So that would be, again, your passport or your birth certificate. Um, yes. yes. You said this is no good? Not, Not to use this. for this purpose. Yeah, no. Oh, Even yes. though it's got this. Right, correct. we can't use it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so at the top of that um, page, the identification document checklist, it says proof of lawful presence and proof, proof of date of birth. So these are the items that you can provide to the registry to prove your lawful presence. Everyone has a different situation. Um, so that's one of the reasons we wanted to give you this list, because there is, there is quite, a, there are quite a few options. Um, 
I'm not going to go into detail about each and every one of them because, to be honest, I'm not an expert on naturalization and alien cards. That's not our expertise. Um, but this we wanted to provide to you if those are documents that you do have. Um, on the back, proof of Massachusetts residency. So if you're getting a standard credential, as I mentioned, you need one proof of residency. If you're getting a real ID, you need two proofs of residency. And this list is quite extensive. Um, so there are a lot of options that you can choose. As long as you bring in two, you'll be all set. Um, one of the things that I want to mention, and it does tell you, I'm sorry, did you say something? This, if, if you skipped over, the name must match. Yes, I'm gonna, I will we'll go back to we'll get to you. <laughs> I wanted to say one thing for the proof of residency. Um, one of the things is first class mail dated within 60 days. That's not any first class mail. If you look, it is under the, it has to be state, federal, city, town, county. Um, so it's not just anything that you like get. Just a piece mail. of mail that you get that says first class. Yeah, yeah. it, it would have to be something from state, federal, state. And they state. don't really, they don't the really spell that out there. So we just kind of wanted to mention that. Yeah. And you don't take photocopies, but what if you don't get your, you get your bills online? A printed copy would be fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. You just take, can't take a photo um, copy of a bill and bring that. Okay. In. Or W two. To or in five years to renew the real ID, do you have to do the same thing over? No. You have to provide all these one time, just once. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing, thing, the other thing I will say um, that we get all the time is if you're doing a bank statement, it has to be a checking account and it has to have a picture of at least one cancel check on there. It has to be within sixty days, but it can't be a savings account. They're very particular, so right. that's another thing. That and that's why you have a lot of different options. Yeah. If that's not something that you have, then look at the list. There's the something else that bill. you can provide. Yeah. You have a lot of people that come in. They have a statement savings. They don't necessarily have a checking account. So this is the list. Pick something else from that list, and we certainly can use that. <clears throat> yes? I'm not a member of uh, AARP. Triple A. I'm a member of AARP, mm -hmm. but I was a member in Louisiana. But my son and daughter-in-law, who I live with, right. are members of Triple A. Mm -hmm. Can I come to your office and get the Massachusetts identification card? Unfortunately, unless you're a Triple A member, you will not be able to renew with us. You would have to be a member in order for Triple A to be able to do. It. Okay. Well, you see. It's a good thing you said that because they don't make that clear because I saw on television mm -hmm. that you could go to the, either the motor vehicle or the AAA and get all of the <coughs> information mm -hmm. that you uh, projected. If you look on the registry website, it will say if you are a AAA member, you can go to AAA for these services. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's easier. Yes. Is there an age restriction yeah, oh yeah. for going to AAA to that. renew your license or ID? No, we do the eye tests and everything, yeah. so yeah, no yeah. age. Yep. Take your photo. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, your photo is going to be, once you do the real ID, um, your, your photo will be good for 14 and a half years. Is there a price difference? Same price. Whether you get the real ID. Yeah, yeah. The real, if you're renewing, it's going to be $50. Yes. I have a teenager who will be getting her first license, so mm -hmm. you yes. recommend that she does the whole thing the first time. I would say so. I would. And she yeah, has a passport, so that's all she should have to bring with her is her passport, correct? Is she going to do a real ID? Or a real ID. ID. Then she would have to bring the proof of Social Security, okay. the passport, and then the two proof of mass residency. Oh, she has to bring all three. Yes. yes. But I would recommend if she's because doing it, I would, I would recommend doing it. She doesn't have to if she wants to use her passport. Now, see, I was under that. I was under a wrong impression, too, then. I thought once you had a passport, you could yeah. just bring that to renew or to get the license. No, you have to bring all these documents. All the other yeah. stuff, too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I was definitely wrong. But the same price whether they did a real ID or just renew the license. Absolutely. Right. And what's that price? $50. 50. Just for a regular Class D license. Whether you go to AAA or whether you go to the register. No, that's to mm -hmm. add on. Well, 25 is if you renewed your license last year. Oh. So it's going to expire in five years, but you want to get the real ID by 2020. 
you can come in and it's going to be 25. Okay, it's like but if you're renewing, renewing at your renewal If you're time. renewing for five years, it's 50. Mm -hmm. And as she mentioned before, Kim, it, your date remains the same. Your if you do a, date remains if the you're same. If you're doing a 25. Add that, yeah. that, that, that add on. So if your birthday's coming up, mm -hmm. I would just renew it for the 50. Yeah. For the 50. Even before your birth date, you can renew you can. You can So your birthday's in September, and we went in now. You can renew it up to a year in advance. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, one of each one there. So we're going to talk about name change. That's a big uh, So a lot of women take their husband's name when you get married. So if you're doing a real ID and you do not have a passport, you're providing us with your birth certificate. Well, your birth certificate has your birth name. It does not have your married name. So you have to prove no, why you your name has been changed. You so you have to provide a marriage certificate, a divorce decree, something that tells the registry why that name has been changed. So all the documents that we collect, everything has to match what's in the registry system. So if uh, your name is Margaret, but you go by Peggy, um, and you put Peggy on one of your documents, that doesn't match. <coughs> so you have to prove why that name has been changed. Ready seal. Beg your pardon. Ready seal. Yes. And it can't be a marriage certificate like from the church. It has to be like from the city, from the, the town. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And if you um, happen to have been married um, several times, we have to we have to follow like the path like of the change. name change. <laughs> <laughs> so if you went from like Smith to Brown to you know we we have to see those names. Yeah. How to would see, you like, know why that? Why how would you know <laughs> if you went from Smith to Brown, but then well, you, you went if you come in with your you provide if you come in with your documents and your um, Sereno now yeah and your birth certificate says Smith. Could you just show your Sereno? Hmm? Could you not just show your Sereno? If you have a passport that says Sereno yeah. and everything says Sereno, that's fine. Yeah. But if you have a birth certificate that says something else, we need to know. But it, you were saying if you were married multiple times. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you kept changing you your, change name, your name, back, it would know it in the system. It, no. no. Because we're no. not going to be able to follow, to follow the trail that everything matches. Because we look at the birth certificate, yeah. your maiden name, we look at your name now, and if you just say you've been married several times, and you bring in your current marriage license, the name when you got married to that person, that last name, that's oh, not going to be different. Do you know what I mean? So oh. we need to follow. We need to follow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have had uh, actually one person who came in who was married divorced and married that same person again. Yes. So changed her name yes. back and forth. Oh. So we had to have all that documentation to provide to the registry. We don't need it. But the registry. I'm going to have the registry. Do you have any questions on any of those? What's the average time to get this done if you were to walk in? Good question, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with us, if you, if you AAA member and you come to one of our offices, I have to admit um, they are extremely busy right now because everyone feels that they need the real ID, so we've got an influx of people and that's wonderful. Um, but the wait times can run anywhere from 30 minutes to 3 hours. Hey. From the time we take you in and check in your documents, have you sit down and actually service you um, for uh, your real ID or your standard credential. The registry, from what we understand, is feeling that same, you know, that same crunch. Um, their lines, I believe, are a bit longer than ours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just an FYI, you can follow the wait time at the registry yes. if you've got a computer and access. And you cannot follow the wait time at AAA. You can call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I believe yeah. it is. <laughs> if you had absolutely everything that you needed, mm -hmm. as in you filled it out yes. online, you had your, you can call up the document, I've right. finished my application. In real time, if I had everything, you just had to snap my picture, mm -hmm. how long would that take? I would say 15 to 18 minutes Beautiful. for a transaction. If somebody did not have everything mm -hmm. they needed and they came in with half the stuff, right. 
do you at some point say, okay, we started the process, we'll save half this, or it do depends. they start new when they come in each I mean, time? We will try to look through the documents before we start and... Um, so you do go over it. And, and so, you know, people are waiting in line, we do try to do that and like inform them what they need, bring this back. Sometimes they'll come in, they want a real ID, they have enough for a standard ID, they so that's their that. choice whether they want to do that, or sometimes if you don't bring proof of lawful presence, we can't do anything. Um, until you provide that. So we do try to um, yeah. notify them of that before we start the process so they're not waiting. For our members, we really we want to qualify them yeah. before we have them sit down and wait for two hours we'll um, and they, they're the missing moment. their lawful presence document. Correct. Um, so at so some point, yeah. do you actually get through the application process and give them that number that they need so next time they come in they just have the no. number so you can start their... We do not do that. Okay, no. that's have. good to know. The registry may, may, may do that. But and I doubt that too. Yeah, I doubt they would. I'm sure you guys go above that. Yeah. Um, Sometimes what will happen is we'll, you know, they have everything. Yeah. And we'll put them into the registry system. And for some reason, they get it doesn't like one of those documents, yeah. it will kick it back out and then we're unable to do it. In that case, if they go home, try to provide us with something else, mm -hmm. we, we'll, we will try and accommodate them when they come in. Do yeah. the best that we can. We don't like, if people have been waiting, then they see someone walk in the door, why, why, why are you, you taking you know, that person? Mm -hmm. yep. So it yeah. gets a little tricky. Yes. Is there a best time of day? I wish I could tell you yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we never know. We, in our office, we have, you know, ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes first thing in the morning, we may have seven people waiting before we even open the door. So right there, you're looking at an hour and a half at least. And, and we check them all in, we have them sit, and then we work on them one at a time. So it's, it's really hard to tell. Because there's no pattern. We haven't right. now, you know, narrowed down a pattern. Um, <laughs> yes, bring your lunch. Uh, we are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. And Saturdays, we do process licensing. Um, registry does not. Uh, 9 to 1 o'clock. Where are you located? 72 Main Street, right in the Walmart Plaza. Mm -hmm. With dollar stores too. In North Bay. Yes. Yes. Well, you can't make an appointment. Now it's, it's a walk-in walk service. Every, every, every service that we provide, it's yeah. a walk-in service. Mm -hmm. So I want to go registry. back to this lawful presence. Sure. Proof. Yes. Yes. Um, I have a passport. At one time, I had a passport. It's been expired mm -hmm. for a while. Okay. It says or an original or certified version of U.S. birth certificate mm -hmm. that has a raised seal. Right. Now, when when I got my birth certificate, I got my Passport. Yes. My parents had to go to the state capitol mm -hmm. and get a copy of a register that they had there. Right. Uh, uh, and that, that was what was used mm -hmm. to get my passport. But it does not have a raised seal. And I don't believe it does. I need yeah. to know if it I don't to want to. Some sort of seal. It, it doesn't, doesn't have, have like an embossed. No, 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 it's, 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 it's a a exactly stamp. a copy of something, a document. Well, sometimes that, I have seen like a certified copy, right. but there'll be some sort some of stamp seal, yeah, maybe, like in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sometimes stamp. you have to hold it up to the light, and you'll yeah. you'll see yeah. it. Yeah, it's especially if it's an old yeah. The thing is, when it comes to birth certificates, yeah. because every state seems to handle it differently. Yes, so until, to be honest, until we actually look at it, and touch mm -hmm. it, that's really it's when we make the determination. Yeah. Yeah. So it was good enough to get a passport. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I we could, think we could look at it. <laughs> right. But it is, it's not an exact science. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to renew a passport. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then they do this at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But your passport anywhere. is always your passport. Pardon me? Your passport is always your passport. Your real ID. It's expired, though. It's expired. No, what I'm saying oh, yeah. is if you don't want to get it. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. If you're traveling out of the country, even if you're going to Canada, at this point now, you, you still need to have your passport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that real ID is not going to function in the same way your passport does. I, th I believe that some people believe that it will. It, it will not. Oh, oh, so you're saying that if you want to... It's, it's, if you it's want to leave the country, you've still got to have a passport. Right. Yeah. If you want to leave the country, you're going to need your passport. Just mm -hmm. domestic, exactly. Yes. So it's two things in each category. Is that what you mean by an, a real ID? Uh, for real ID, you would need, if you want to write it that says, down, two proofs of lawful presence. I'm sorry, one, one proof of lawful presence. For a real ID. For a real ID. Don't you need two? No. Nope. Just one. Lawful presence, just one. Just one. That's your birth certificate or your passport. So just one of those. One oh, real ID is what I'm. 
One, yeah, one, one proof of Social Security. And it's one proof either way, whether you do on the standard or the real ID. And okay, so one in each category. One for lawful presence, one for Social Security, two for proof of residence. If okay. you're doing a bill, like true. a tax bill or, and a utility bill. Or and as, as, you, as you read through there, you'll see if it's a utility bill or okay. a yeah. credit card statement. It has to be within 60 days of when you're applying for that um, document. Yep. Okay. To, to, you know, to go into a federal building, can yes. you tell me what what I need? I just have a Massachusetts identification card. Now, what do I need to go? After 2020, you're going to need a real right. ID. Right now, that's going to work for you. Come October of 2020, you will need either a passport or a real ID to get into that federal building. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have some time. But if that's what you want to do, you need one of those. One of those and then I have another question. Sure. In Louisiana, mm -hmm. I'm back to Louisiana. Okay. I, I don't know anything about Massachusetts, but I can tell you about Louisiana because I lived there for 75 years. In Louisiana, mm -hmm. if you have a Bible yes. or a religious book and it's recorded, your birth and date and so forth, they will accept that. Will you accept it? I don't know. So then they have to go to court, like my wife did. She didn't have a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. She was born, she was a midwife, and she was born in Bogalusa, Louisiana. And when we wanted to get married, right. the marriage certificate, we had to go to court. And they don't refer to life preserve yet. <laughs> <laughs> so generally speaking, if you do not have a birth certificate that is within the last 20 years, you can call where you were born and have them look up the records. You have to get them some type of identification. It can be certified mail a lot of times if you're out of state. They will work with you, but mm -hmm. you're going to need a government document that comes from the whichever state or municipality that recorded your birth. A lot of times it's the town or city hall where you were born. So that's the best way to get make sure this is all done. Whether it has a raised seal or anything like that, as long as it's a government document right. and it's been stamped or a raised seal or whatever it is, that should be good. But if you have a citizenship, that's good enough, right? If you became naturalized. Yes, if you have your naturalization you documents, you don't that's need the. That raised seal for birth. Yeah, as long as it's a government you document, you should be good to go. Because I have a. Yeah, naturalization. Naturalization? Page. Yep. Yeah, as long as it's a, an official government document and not a copy of it. <laughs> Just so you guys understand, this really came about because there was a huge problem with imposters, particularly in the state asking, of Massachusetts. Why did this come about? They wouldn't know of this necessarily. Right. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's why I'm trying to throw them a life preserve. Yeah. Um, if you saw in the news a handful of months ago, there was a big sting at the registry. There was registry workers that were actually getting paid money by criminal organizations oh. to submit false licenses. Yeah, driver's license. So this is, this is kind of going on throughout the country. Uh, Massachusetts was in, in really rough shape. So we're trying to get, because essentially there was um, TSA and the feds were relying on the documents that were coming from the state. And they realized the documents that come from the state weren't always great. So that's one of the things you got to think about, is you're all probably very nice people. There are a lot of bad people out there that are trying to manipulate the system. And this is what we're trying to avoid, is the manipulation of the system. So yeah, you're going to have to jump through some hoops, but essentially you just have to prove who you are, and you should be good to go. What are they going to do with people that don't want to listen and try to get through the system? They won't be able to either travel or get into a federal government building. So if you don't like to travel and you don't go into the federal buildings, get a regular ID and you're all set. <laughs> if you're going to travel and you're going to need to... Is it like the JFK federal building? Is that a federal yeah. building? Yeah. The JFK Did you just say federal? JFK federal building. The clue is the federal part of the federal building. Is it post office a federal building? Yes. Yeah, anything that is uh, the U.S. government is a federal building. So a post, you can't go in a post office after 2020 without... Well, you, you can, because you're just going in to do something. But then anything that stops you, like a federal courthouse or anything oh, where they're going to stop and ID you, yeah. they're going to want that real ID. The post office 
and I was just in there today. They didn't try to start me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as long as you, any place that you can walk into, you're fine. It's the places that they're stopping, like I said, courthouses or anything like that, that the security level is higher, you're going to need that real ID. When you stop people that are speeding or whatever, yeah, as a police isn't. officer, are you going to ask for those real IDs? Or? They need to have a driver's license in Massachusetts. Other than that, whether it's a, whether it's a mass license or the real ID, yeah. we don't care because we're not TSA, we're not checking you on your anyway, plane. My mind's not, so you can't get a driver's license without a real ID or a passport? No, you can still get the driver's license. You're still going to have to provide a little bit more information than you did previously, which that's the reason for that was all the imposters that were That's what I'm place. saying. There's so many people that drive with phony licenses. Yeah, and we're hoping that we can stop weeding them out. Uh, part, you know, like I said, part of the problem was that there was registry workers that were actually involved in the scam. So they've all been arrested and tried and found guilty. So. Yeah, but they're around the tail in the day. <laughs> yeah, but at least they're not working the registry anymore. Do we have any more questions? Everything? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's on. Does not be trouble any place, or is that I still need a real ID or anything? That would be the police officer. Yeah, you'll still need the real ID. Uh, thank you for your service, but that's uh, other than the veterans discount, you're not going to be able to get anywhere. So yeah. you will still need the real ID for travel. Thanks, I know. Weren't you in the service? Yeah. Yes, he was. What's that? Weren't you in the service? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So when I go. And then I forget what I'm gonna I'm supposed to bring. You'll just tell me. Yes. Oh, oh absolutely. Because yeah. a bunch of us are gonna go in and forget what we're supposed yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> so now, I'm going to that form. Okay. okay. And if I can help you, well, it's just got so many. It's already got so much on it. I know. It it's is, a, it's it a nice source of information, right. though. Right. I mean, when you say you only need three things, but then when I'm looking at this form, well, those are your options. Just take one off those. One off of those different switch options. You know, you can always ask. I mean, uh. Sherry can work it out, with an, and if we have a question, we can always call them, and we can work it out with them. And I also want you to know, if you have problems getting your birth certificate, you should always know you'll never get a copy of your original birth certificate, ever. You're only going to get a certified copy, and there should always be two locations. The city and town where the birth took place, meaning where the hospital was, and then the city and town where the parents lived. That's the typical locations your birth certificate will be recorded at. The rest of them all get sent into the state, and that's where the originals are kept, and you'll never get a copy of that. It's always a certified copy from the city or state. You're, you're too young to know the Absolutely, but I have seen the home birth records also, and I have seen originals. It came out of the state. Correct. Really the right. Thank you. Right. I want to thank everyone for coming. I think. You're ready to go on the road, lady. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great job, thank you. And the gentleman in back in blue. <laughs> with our elder affairs and whatever else we ask them to check into. So thank you for coming by today, Derek. Um, we're available for more questions. Write them down. Sherry can get in touch. Thank you for coming. And thank you, Norkim. Thank you, Philly, as always, for uh,